Have you ever wondered what would happen if you ate only meat for an entire month? Well, I did it, and the results will shock you. I'm talking about a full 30 days of nothing but meat, bone broth, and water. No veggies, no fruits, no carbs, just pure protein and fat, baby. Plus, the carnivore diet has been gaining some serious traction lately, with folks claiming it cured their ailments and boosted their energy levels to the moon. I had to see for myself. On the one hand, I love a good ribeye steak as much as the next guy, but could I really handle a whole month without a single sweet potato fry? The carnivore diet isn't exactly new, you know. Our ancient ancestors thrived on meat for millennia. Even today, there are cultures around the world, like the Inuit and the Maasai, who still rely heavily on animal products for sustenance. And let's not forget about the modern-day carnivore pioneers like Dr. Sean Baker and Michaela Peterson, who claim the diet cured their chronic illnesses. These folks swear by the power of meat, and their stories are pretty compelling. Of course, the internet is also full of naysayers, folks who think eating only meat is a recipe for disaster. They'll hit you with the cholesterol warnings, the fiber fears, and the whole you'll turn into a caveman spiel. But hey, that's the beauty of the human experience, right? We all have our own opinions and beliefs, so, with a healthy dose of skepticism and a whole lot of curiosity, I dove headfirst into the carnivore abyss. Let me tell you, the first week was a wild ride. My body was basically a meat processing factory working overtime, every meal was a glorious symphony of sizzling steaks, juicy burgers, and crispy bacon. But it wasn't all sunshine and bacon roses. The carb cravings were real, folks. I'm talking headaches, fatigue, and a serious case of the meat sweats. It felt like my body was going through withdrawal, detoxing from years of processed food and sugary drinks. There were moments when I questioned my sanity, but then I'd sink my teeth into a perfectly cooked lamb chop, and all those doubts would melt away. Plus, I was determined to see this experiment through. Week two rolled around and something amazing happened. My body started to adapt. The carb cravings subsided, the energy levels returned, and I felt strangely good. The digestive issues I'd experienced in week one vanished. No more bloating, no more discomfort, just pure carnivorous bliss. I was also sleeping like a rock. Eight hours of deep, uninterrupted sleep every night. And let's talk about the mental clarity, folks. I felt sharp, focused, and alert throughout the day. Of course, the bacon didn't hurt either. Bacon became my go-to snack, my reward for pushing through the tough times. There's nothing quite like the smell of bacon sizzling in the pan to lift your spirits. By week three, I was feeling like a lean, mean, meat-eating machine. My energy levels were through the roof, my mind was sharp as a tack, and my clothes were fitting a little looser. I was even starting to enjoy the simplicity of the diet. No more agonizing over meal prep, no more complicated recipes, just meat, cooked to perfection every single time. But even amidst this carnivore high, whispers of doubt began to creep in. Was I getting enough nutrients? What about the long-term effects of this diet? I found myself questioning my decision, wondering if I was pushing things too far, but then I'd remember how good I felt, how much energy I had, and how clear my mind was. Each bite was a victory, a testament to my willpower and my commitment to seeing this journey through to the end. The final week of my carnivore odyssey arrived, and with it came a sense of both accomplishment and anticipation. I had conquered the cravings, embraced the fat, and emerged on the other side feeling stronger and more focused than ever before. My body had transformed into a well-oiled, meat-powered machine. The mental clarity I'd experienced throughout the month reached new heights. My mind was a laser beam, cutting through distractions and zeroing in on the task at hand. The physical changes were also undeniable. I had leaned out considerably, shedding excess weight and revealing a more sculpted physique. My energy levels remained consistently high, and I felt lighter and more agile than I had in years. The carnivore diet, for all its perceived restrictions, had actually simplified my life in many ways. Meat had become my constant, my anchor in a sea of dietary chaos. Now let's talk results, baby! Because at the end of the day, numbers don't lie. Before embarking on this meat-fueled adventure, I stepped on the scale, and it clocked me in at a solid insert starting weight. 30 days of carnivore living later, I returned to that same scale, and guess what? I had dropped a significant insert amount of weight loss pounds. But here's the thing, folks. It wasn't just about the number on the scale. It was about how I felt. My energy levels were through the roof, my clothes fit better, and I felt lighter and more agile than ever before. And it wasn't just my physical health that benefited from the carnivore lifestyle. My mental clarity and focus were sharper than ever before. Now I know what you're thinking, hold on Joe, isn't eating only meat bad for you? It's a common concern, and it's worth diving into. 
Of course, the carnivore diet isn't without its critics. It's a hot topic in the health and wellness community. Some folks in the health and wellness world will tell you it's a one-way ticket to heart disease, nutrient deficiencies, and a whole host of other health problems. They argue that a diet so restrictive can't possibly be good for long-term health. They'll hit you with the cholesterol is bad argument, pointing to studies that link high cholesterol with heart disease. The you need fiber for digestion spiel, emphasizing the importance of a balanced diet rich in fruits, vegetables and whole grains, and the ever popular humans are omnivores lecture, reminding us that our ancestors ate a variety of foods. And hey, I get it, these arguments are compelling and based on years of nutritional science, it's natural to be skeptical of anything that goes against the grain, especially when it comes to something as important as our health. We all want to make the best choices for our bodies. But here's the thing. The science on the carnivore diet is still evolving. New research is being conducted and we're learning more every day. There are studies that point to potential benefits like improved blood sugar control, reduced inflammation, and even weight loss. These findings suggest that there might be more to the carnivore diet than we initially thought. And then there are studies that highlight potential risks, like nutrient deficiencies, which can lead to serious health issues if not addressed properly, and an increased risk of certain diseases. It's a complex issue with no easy answers. The truth is, there's no one-size-fits-all answer when it comes to nutrition. What works for one person might not work for another, and it's important to find a diet that suits your individual needs and lifestyle. As my 30-day carnivore experiment drew to a close, I found myself reflecting on the journey, the challenges, and the surprising transformations I had experienced. It was a month filled with highs and lows, moments of doubt, and unexpected triumphs. The meat curtain had fallen, revealing a leaner, more energized version of myself, both physically and mentally. I felt stronger, more focused, and surprisingly more in tune with my body's needs. Had it been easy? Hell no! The first week had tested my willpower like never before with cravings and doubts creeping in, but the subsequent weeks had brought a sense of adaptation, even enjoyment to the carnivore lifestyle. I learned to savor the simplicity and the routine. I had discovered a newfound appreciation for the simplicity of a meat-centric diet, the primal satisfaction of a perfectly cooked steak, and the undeniable power of protein and fat to fuel both body and mind. Each meal became a celebration of nourishment and strength. But beyond the physical and mental changes, the carnivore experiment had sparked a deeper curiosity within me, a desire to question conventional wisdom and explore the boundaries of human potential. I found myself diving into research, eager to understand the science behind my experiences. It had forced me to confront my own biases, to challenge my beliefs about nutrition and health, and to embrace the unknown with an open mind and a hearty appetite. I began journaling my thoughts, documenting the shifts in my perspective. The carnivore diet may not be for everyone, and that's okay. Each person's journey with food is unique, and what works for one may not work for another. But for me, this experiment was a revelation, a step towards understanding my own body and mind better. So what's the takeaway from my 30-day carnivore adventure? After a month of consuming nothing but meat, I found myself reflecting deeply on the experience. Is it a sustainable lifestyle? Can one truly thrive on such a diet long term? Or is it just a temporary fix? A magic bullet for all that ails you? Or perhaps just another fleeting trend in the ever-evolving world of diets? Or just another fad diet destined to fade into obscurity? The questions are many, and the answers are not always clear-cut. The truth is, there's no easy answer, no one-size-fits-all solution. Each person's journey with food is unique. What I can say is that the carnivore diet, for all its perceived extremes, challenged my preconceived notions about nutrition and made me rethink what I thought I knew about food. It pushed me to my physical and mental limits, testing my endurance and willpower in ways I hadn't anticipated. And ultimately, it left me feeling healthier, more energized, and more mentally focused than ever before. The changes were profound and undeniable. But beyond the personal transformations, the carnivore experiment sparked a broader conversation about food, health, and the choices we make every day. It made me question the very foundations of my dietary beliefs. It highlighted the importance of questioning conventional wisdom, of not taking everything at face value of listening to our bodies understanding their signals and responding accordingly, and of finding what works best for us as individuals. Each person's path to health is their own. The carnivore diet may not be the answer for everyone and that's perfectly okay. But it serves as a powerful reminder that there's no one-size-fits-all approach to health and wellness. We must each find our own way. It's about exploring different options, 
listening to our bodies, and being open to new experiences, and finding what works best for us as individuals. In the end, it's all about personal discovery and making informed choices. So there you have it, folks, my 30-day carnivore odyssey in all its meaty glory. It was a wild ride, full of challenges, triumphs, and surprising revelations, but ultimately, it was a journey of self-discovery, a testament to the human body's incredible ability to adapt and thrive. Now I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the carnivore diet? Have you tried it? Would you ever consider it? Let's keep the conversation going in the comments below, because at the end of the day, it's all about sharing our experiences, learning from each other, and finding what works best for us as individuals on this crazy journey we call life.